There hey guys, are. I'm Rick, and that is one big pile of bricks with the amazing Gabby and Ryan. Woo! Hey, hi Rick. Hey guys, <laughs> it's funny because we were literally chatting for like ten minutes, so <laughs> <laughs> got to get out Wait, all the I'm bad words. Got to get out the bad words first before you start. That's usually how it goes. Exactly. Not bad words. Just Ryan's bad words. Yeah. Well, I'm like after four o'clock. Doesn't matter. <laughs> so how have you guys been? Good. Busy. Yeah, very good. Way too busy. And wait, very, very busy from what I've been seeing. Ryan's all over the place doing his Lego uh, workshops. And yeah, what are they, Ryan? Of... Explain to the people what do you do? Yeah, yeah. I, I go around to schools and uh, do Lego robotics workshops or Lego STEM build workshops and uh, a bit of, bit of teacher PD in there as well. But, yeah, for the, for the most part... Um, yeah, I go into schools with far too much uh, unsorted Lego and set ridiculous <laughs> challenges like, can you reach the ceiling? And um, and in the process of doing that, yep, a lot of the kids do successfully manage to do that, which is a rather exciting awesome. thing to do. But yeah, it's, uh, it, it's always very interesting when they think that the challenge is impossible and then before you know it, they've succeeded. Or I have, one of the two. <laughs> well you're a certified lego master both you guys are now class as veterans you've been on two seasons it's true I, i'm still waiting for my certification but uh yeah i don't think yeah i don't think that comes with any official documentation <laughs> still no poster <laughs> on the wall. Look, yeah. right there they didn't give you that little lego build that they give everyone else around the world did you guys no get that australian lego masters didn't get that well, season four did, but they but we got a big box of uh, mixed Lego. We did get, we got a better deal. Oh yeah, that's so. right. Because you guys got all those Lego sets, right? Yeah, mm. I think all the previous the seasons before us all got that as well. But at the same time as us, like a big yeah, um, gift set from Lego. Oh, you made it anyway. Oh. Pretty easy to pretty easy to brick link. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite the same. Not, no, it's no, it's not. It's not the same. Not the same. It's not the same. You have to pay set, for it but... yourself. Yeah, it's the boxy one. Yeah. I actually, to be fair, I don't even think I even had to buy any of the pieces. I think that I actually had all of those. I mean, it's, it's just full of grey wing plates. That's the hardest part to find. Okay. In the whole thing. The, the question yeah. is, why didn't you make Gabby one? Yeah, Ryan, where's mine? <laughs> 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 I've, I've one thing we always know about Ricky, he was always, he was always going to set me up, wasn't he? He was always going <laughs> to, I'll be back in a minute. I'll make you one. Yeah. That's all right. He did make me a Brick of Doom t-shirt. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, it's upstairs. I forgot to put it on. I wear it all the time. <laughs> it's hidden stashed in the corner. Give You know how you get one of those presents? There's always that person in your family that gives you that weird item. Ryan's like, here, have this t-shirt. And you're like, I love it. It's amazing. Thank you so much. In the draw. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, much, much like the brick, it was only ever intended to be a prop that would have been a funny, uh, well, well, we, I thought funny, like for us to first, uh, first time we come back, um, back through the doors and uh, we're both reminding people that we were the curse to that got eliminated, came back and then got all the finale and we just, Deserve to be here, all right? We deserve to be here. <laughs> yeah, but you guys yeah. did fairly well coming back. Like, you know, it, it's going to yeah, be hard I mean, we, this pressure. We surprised ourselves, honestly. Like, we mm. genuinely thought we were a bit of a... Um, uh, we didn't quite know why we were there because I think we were the only team that had really come third, you know, and we, we expected... We weren't told beforehand all the teams that were going to be there, so it wasn't until we got... Mm up to start filming that we found out who else was um, going to be on the show. So we, we sort of had anticipated that we'd, it would all be finalists and winners and, and so on. And we thought we were a bit of a wild card, didn't we, Ryan? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Statistically, yeah, we Ryan, figured they'd go Ryan for... applied for every season. Like, didn't you, Ryan? And season four, too. I, they just they kept knocking him back. They're like, go like, away, yeah, Ryan. That's go enough. away, Ryan. <laughs> Well, that, that that was the funniest thing. Like, yes, I did apply for season one, got very close. Uh, season two came in was way too cocky. I was like, I have arrived. So fair enough, they didn't. Uh, that was me and you in that session, if you remember. Uh, yeah, 
Yep. And uh, I remember <laughs> that we, uh, we were actually in the same uh, session as Annie and Runa. Um, we were. And look how that worked yeah. out for Annie and Runa. <laughs> yeah, well. <That's> what... <laughs> um, but, but yeah, but it was funny because season four, the, uh, the usual uh, broad arm of, um, oh, what do you call them? The, forgotten the, the people producers? that do that do the casting casting agents oh, yes, 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 yes. um and yeah about four or five of, the, of us actually did get a we noticed that you've previously applied for lego masters would you be interested in applying mm-hmm. again uh and we're like <laughs> uh came third last year mate uh but sure i'll go on it again yeah um, yeah <laughs> i think michael's oh, asking it again sorry. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's funny because the right every year they send that the message way. well every year they're looking for people right because the problem yeah. is with Lego is that it's not a problem. Lego is this interesting product that brings people together. So you get people who are introverts that don't want to be on TV, who are very, <laughs> very talented builders. And then you get yeah, people that are true. extroverts who end up on TV like Kale, you know, that end up on TV yeah. because it's amazing, right? He creates good TV. But the talented builders, like, don't want to go on TV. Like, because they don't, they just want to do Lego themselves. They don't want to be. Yeah. I, I think for a lot of people, it's just a quiet, pleasurable pastime where they can really focus and get their flow go, happening and, and just enjoy themselves. And I, I don't think the competitive nature of like speed Lego, it's a whole yeah. different board game that, you know, totally. doesn't appeal to everyone. I don't know why <laughs> we, what we were thinking, Ryan. <laughs> Well, uh, I, I know I know what got you on. Uh, it's not true. Oh, well, that's true. No, I did. Um, I had a friend who is a Lego therapist. Who, well, she's a we're both occupational therapists, but she did Lego therapy. Yeah. And I've been using Lego Serious Play in my work in project management. Oh, cool. And so we just thought we'd have a cool backstory. You know, like people people who use Lego for work, but in a different way. So, I. Um, talk to her about applying together and then I put the application together it was during COVID you know and then um, I told her oh the application's all ready to go I'm going to send it in and she's like I thought you were joking oh. and so I I probably did have one too many glasses of wine last night and I was like I'm just going to send it in anyway so, <laughs> and just wing it and see what happens bring it and see what happens I didn't really know much about Lego which I didn't tell Ryan until um, no until just before we filmed the season three finale. <laughs> oh, FYI, I don't know nothing about Lego. And he's like, oh, my God, I'm in trouble. <laughs> oh, well, no, I mean, Lego serious play. I mean, I'd spent a lot of time using Lego, but it's not about what you make so much. It's about the stories you tell with it. So yeah. it doesn't necessarily yeah. need to hold together or look good. Um, easily the worst collection of bricks uh, that you could ever find. Like the worst, worst <laughs> it's than a cheap bit random. It's got some Duplo in there as well. Yeah. Um, so... I was coming at it from quite a different kind of angle, just that sort of storytelling, I think. But um, we, I think we made an okay team, Ryan. I think we found our groove eventually. hundred uh, percent. Like I, 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 it's funny because I, I think about that often. Like that, that you know, as we stood there behind the the roller door, and I actually thought it was after you'd finished the build, and and I actually was able to. Yeah, say, no, it well, was before we. It was after we before finished we started building, the final we build. Okay, but I just remember. Well, for, <laughs> so, for someone who's a hack, you've done all right. All right. <laughs> oh, if you told me I'm this before the, before the roller door, before uh, before the first build, I might have been packing myself. But um, yeah, but it, 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 <laughs> I had told I had to... told the producers straight up and the and the casting agents. I said, look, I usually build with my kids. You know, I do it. I watch a lot of YouTube videos, a lot of podcasts. But I'm not. Um, you know, I have never. I've never done an exhibition. I've never done a brick convention. I, you know, I wasn't in the Lego kind of community. Um. And I think, I don't know, I think they're maybe looking just for new voices or for people who had a bit of an outsider's perspective because they wanted those scenes, Ryan, where you're teaching me how to do something or explaining something and it probably makes kind of not bad Lego masters, do you know what I mean, to have someone kind of learning alongside their partner. <laughs> I don't know. That, that was not the edit at all, Gabby. It was you telling me what to do and I made it happen. That was <laughs> 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 I'm not going to say anything here because I usually I like to poke the bear in these things, but I just feel like that, you know, sometimes Ryan, you need a little bit of a direction. <laughs> well, and and as 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 much you as that it, I didn't say feels like a bear poke. Um, no, you, you, you I, I actually think that was the uh, in a big way a strength of our team that um, Gabby uh, when we're having our chats, we had about six um, weeks to get to know each other on Zoom. 
and um, she was busy researching me and seeing all of my very, shall we say, strong comments on Facebook uh, as I was um, uh, taking care <laughs> of the various outliers in the Lego train community uh, as, a, as an admin. And so she thought that I was this like crazy person um, that was going to be like telling her what to do and, you know, you know, chop, chop, get it done and all, all that sort of stuff. And um, she'd just be, <laughs> at best, best case, a, a minion where, where I could tell her what to do and she'd just make those things. And from the very first uh, moment on that, on that set, she showed her true colours and uh, her level of uh, organisation and, um, and just ideas generation. Like it, it, it was arguably our superpower, that the, the combination of, um you know Your being able to know-how, yeah yeah and look I, I i can fart around for some for, with an idea for far too long as you know um oh, and just be like so like I, I can't commit to certain things like I'll, I'll just be like no i don't know i don't know i don't know um so it was um and there were still times i did that on even you know under the time pressure but really um, yeah it was really really good to have um but for better or for worse, someone who would say, let's just go with that idea. Um, let's just do that. Um, is, this is this possible? I don't know. Let's give it a go. Um, and We got and- there, though, because the, the first few episodes, I think the first few builds that we did, we were probably being a bit too nice to each other, Rick. So we just sort of, you know, new person. And you just kind of, someone would come up with an idea and be like, okay, we'll, we'll give it a go. And then <laughs> when you, when I think we learned to just say, no, I don't think that'll work. We got yeah. much more and and usually I think we were we were right, and Brian would do it too. Yeah, oh, you 100%. Did that too. Yeah, you we did that. get much. If you're, not, if you're not communicating, you end up with like a very fractious. I'll oh, see you later. Episode one, bang, mm. you're off Lego Masters, and you got called yep. back. Like you know, like that's a big deal. You guys got called back. Not a lot of teams got called back to do it again. It's true, and and funnily enough, like obviously, there's certain sort of characters that they like to have in the show. Um, they don't, they, you know, they could have just come down to mugs and got you know one set of one style of per- people and made a made a show of it. But they actually wanted that eclectic. Um, you know, they want the artist versus the science versus the the crazy guys yeah. from uh, Western Australia, and we Every were time. obviously Every that. Season's got crazy guys from Western Australia. Yeah, and they always seem to do it right. Um, <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, the yeah we were obviously that mumsy dadsy sort of um, vibe, and you know I'm still uh, yeah <laughs> actually Gabby, every time I do these workshops, I go, where's Gabby? You know I have to say she's not my wife, and even if she was, <laughs> she's still <laughs> um, uh, you know, you missed that ten seconds at the start of uh, season one, uh, season three, episode one, and yeah the the, the characters we played were uh, that very homogenous happy couple pair. Um, so it, it was, Screaming it was very interesting that that was still a, a character that they would, they wanted for, for, um, Grandmasters. Um, because they, even like, you know, there's a couple of moments, uh, towards the middle, towards the end of, um, Grandmasters where Gabby and I were, uh, you know, we were definitely under the pump. We were struggling a little bit, um, in terms of the builds, we were struggling a little bit in terms of communication. Um, they were definitely poking us a bit more, um, weren't, get, weren't getting the love as it were, um, and so I did wonder, so this, this is going to be when the Gabby and Ryan bubble breaks. You know, this is where, where yeah. we're no longer that, that, you know, oh, this is the, this is the breakup of the happy couple. Uh, and we got, still got a really good edit um, where, you know, really, we, we still came out of it looking tired, but happy enough. And um, it's, a, it's an interesting one. Well, I don't think you guys ever had it like, you know, and... A lot of people, myself included, have clashed with Kale. And I understand that. Like, when you get two strong personalities in a room, you're not going to get along. And I've told Kale that. I think he's an amazing builder. But I just think the unfortunate thing for him is that he's always been edited in the wrong light. And when you are on the spectrum, you can say things that upset a lot of people, right? And they yep. just capture those moments of him. And you guys are quite lucky that you guys were edited in the nice style instead of the style looking like you're going to kill each other on national TV. Yeah. Oh, we're, um, we're actually talking about me, my edit, and me not. Oh yes. Being, Ryan, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Ryan did a good job from being inappropriate on TV all the time. <laughs> well, I, I was very, very mindful. I knew that this, this wasn't going to suddenly become a, a TV career. 
I knew I was going to have to go back to school, so I knew that I wasn't even going to say boobs on TV. Thank you, Gabby. Oh. Yeah, we built giant boobs. Mr. Ryan made boobs. That That's yeah. what I heard for about three weeks. And it was just like, oh, come on, are we over it yet? No. Yeah, I but... even I even used I didn't even use your surname so that they could use that edit. I know that that just made things easier. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ryan or I'm Mr. Evans. I'm not Mr. Ryan. <laughs> Mr. Ryan. I think making Michael Ryan blush Ryan. was one of my favourite things to oh, do yeah, on the talk show. <laughs> if you can get Ryan to blush, that's that's awesome. So it's a good. It's not that hard. You just get a few red wines in him, and you know he's way way he goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, or, or try and uh, yeah, try and make me break the, the that teacher um, position that I have. You know, I've got to. <laughs> so, so have you got my tie up again? <clears throat> <Yes>. <laughs> have you guys enjoyed the Lego Masters ride? I have. I was. I wasn't expecting much from it, Rick. Like I didn't come into this yeah. knowing what I was doing. It was like I said. It really was sort of mid COVID that we applied, and so. I think everyone was going a bit nuts doing, you know, making sourdough or taking up new hobbies. So I, it was for me, it was probably that sort of um, something a little bit out there that I wouldn't normally have done. And I, I don't work in that. I mean, I use Lego at work, but I don't work in that industry. So I, I didn't have anything I wanted to get out of it. I didn't want to be an influencer or a, you know, Lego podcaster. So. For me, the ride is just about meeting the people and, and doing the show and, and just, you know, some of the, I love some of the conventions that I've done, getting to meet the community for the first time. And it's a really welcoming, pretty special um, community of people, the, the Lego community. So that's the ride for me and it's been great. The kids as well, um, right? The kids are like, oh my God. The kids are awesome. And they're just, they know more about the show than me. And <laughs> they, um, they have the, best questions that come out of completely left field. No, it's fun. Um, I, I, I with that. Yeah. <laughs> the questions are great. <laughs> great. Um, so that, yeah, I've enjoyed the ride. I think season five was tough. Like it was just hard work. It was good, good hard work, but it was, um, it was you know, we were away from inter- home. It was interstate this time, right? Yeah, like, we're up in when Sydney. When you filmed last time, you were in Melbourne, correct? Exactly. So yeah. Sydney was away from the kids. It was there were long days, long weeks, um, and they needed to be because we, you know, we we worked hard, and I think that shows in what we made. So I'm really proud of what we kind of achieved, but it was a slog. <laughs> to be honest with you, yeah. Yeah, especially yeah. being away from your families because you guys both have young children do and very very supportive uh, other halves oh my god it's gonna yeah we owe them a trip to the the maldives oh wait no your husband took that <laughs> and he took he went no he went to mauritius and that and oh, then he went skiing mauritius, mauritius. i still i think i still owe him about six months he's got a tally on the fridge <laughs> <laughs> for every one lego master day that's a week in the real life really, no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like but that's, to be fair, like, yeah, we were three months off, three months away for um, season three and two months to the day for um, uh, season five. So, yeah, that's that's a good you know, five months that, of not being there for the children. Um, but, yeah, we yeah. Our, that's a lot of time up. when you really think about it, right? That's a big chunk. Totally. Yeah, it's it's a lot of time off work too. We both have very understanding kind of bosses and, and colleagues who picked up the slack for us. So, yeah, we owe a lot of people a lot of favors. I love Gabby. Every every uh, couple of weeks, she um, was sending through an email to her HR manager, who happened to be a friend, but it was still like, I just might need another couple of weeks. And uh, was my manager. Another week. And she's like buying that little bit of extra lead one piece at a time. And I'm like, I took, oh, take yeah. a full three months off. Bugger it. <laughs> well, I got on the show, Rick, and I hadn't met Ryan, and we hadn't built together, and I hadn't done that much Lego before. So I was like, well, we're clearly going to be first out. So I and took we three were. weeks' leave. <laughs> I took three weeks leave, and then three months later, we were still at it. I to, like... And, and admitting that, that we didn't know anything story. about Lego right before the finale. Yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, but you could have been worse. Ryan's heavily, heavily into trains. He could have dressed up as like the fat controller, and then everyone would have been into trouble. 
Oh, he's what not fat and tall anymore. He's just the controller now. <laughs> this is the controller. And there's also the tall down thin there. controller. Thank the you very much. The body positive <laughs> controller. Yeah, no. <laughs> I can say I lost a lot of weight in the last year, so I can say it. It's fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I used to look like just a walking thumb. That's how big it was. So it's fine now. <laughs> it, it's funny that we we're, were talking before about the different people that um, might apply and everything like that. And obviously, I got you know ticketed as the train guy. Um, and it's so funny because I don't really consider myself like within the train community. I'm like, I'm definitely a part of it, but I am not the most train guy of all train guys. Um, you know, there are so many train builders that just run rings around me, both in terms of their build skills, but also in terms of their knowledge of trains and the level of detail they go to, to, to make their trains look super duper real. And, you know, I got a little bit Lego famous by making one of the first people that actually just. Uh, build a Thomas with a boiler uh, using those rounds so it actually looked good. Um, but, yeah, as an actual builder, um, as a train builder, I'm very mediocre. <laughs> and as a Thomas fan, I'm also very mediocre. <laughs> those, <laughs> those Thomas kids will come up to you and say, oh, that was in the third episode when uh, your duck uh, ran into the back of, you know, like, <laughs> awesome, yeah, that's what I meant to do, Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's hard because there's like kids love trains, man. And then, like, if you're going to be like, oh, yeah. oh, look, I'm the train dude, it's like, well, no, you're really not. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but that said, I could build a pretty decent train and fairly quickly. So that was helpful. Uh, well, a couple the thing, of points right? there now. <laughs> you, did you guys find it really hard doing season five? Oh, for sure. Like, it was exciting. It was like really thrilling to, you know, get a seat at the table. Like, that was, that was, you know, definitely mm-hmm. a, a cool thing to be able to say, yeah, we got to do that. But it wasn't so nerve-wracking. But the fact that we came in and, um, like, Gabby and I had ended up with a pretty good strategy for Season 3, which was rather than saying, here's a list of builds that we want to do, we were exploring different um, techniques, um, different little ideas that might um, be able to be applied, different different things that, that, you know, rather than saying, we will build a wolf, um, we went with, fairy tale ideas and stuff like that. Um, and so we were able to shoot, sort of shoehorn the ideas into um, whatever the, the task was. Um, but yeah, it was hilarious that that tree was literally a, a tick list of about five or six things that we'd discussed uh, about possibly doing. So uh, we the, came the into tree in episode one, season five. Yeah, the episode yeah. one tree was, was yeah, that, that, that was so cool. Cause it was literally like a, a list of cool ideas that we both had and, it was like tick tick tick. Yep, we know how to do that. Yep, we know how to do that. Yep, we know how to do that. Like, love that. Yeah. yeah, that was your idea doing the the twisty viney. Um, oh, uh, such a technique. fiddly, silly technique. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you've since done it again and on a smaller scale. Oh, so annoying. <laughs> I did it for a brick bench and then I realised I couldn't move the thing and had to spend a whole day sitting there <laughs> rebuilding it. Anyway, uh, um. Level, yes, yeah, season five was next level. I know that's kind of reality TV cliche talk, but yeah, <laughs> the just the standard of builds and the speed and the size that people were building to in shorter times quite often. Mm. And I, d- I don't think if you told us that we c- would be able to build like that at the start of season three that we would have believed you. I think we really got pushed to absolute limits and it's kind of um it's a rare privilege in life to see how far you can go with something you know like to have the opportunity to test your limits like that in a safe kind of way and i was really proud of what we managed to build um but it wasn't a fun process rick (laughs) (laughs) necessarily it's like running a marathon i don't think it's probably much fun but um People obviously do it for a reason. I'll let you know in November when I run one if it's fun. Oh, there you go. Uh, Cool. (laughs) Well done. Uh, I I think it's a better upon reflection thing. Like I I, I know that I turned to my wife um, at the end of uh, season five and just said, never again. No, (laughs) stop me if I agree. Way this is not. This is so just not. This is. Etc. Etc. You can 
fill in the blanks. I'm saving you the uh, editing. Um, but <laughs> um, but it was interesting that within about um, about four or five weeks after, as I was starting to sort of think about what we'd recorded and, you know, starting to think about what it was going to look like on TV and, you know, when people were starting mm. to talk about it at Brickvention and, 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 and afterwards. And I was actually genuinely excited and and at that point if d mac had called and said hey we're going to do a brickman special would you like to be a part of it? i'm like hell's yeah i'm in uh which is a really um interesting yeah, like psychologically like, <laughs> they're process. not in partners they don't pay you up no. it's fine you could do it fine if you do sorry you wouldn't You're come not on partners with partners with who would they pay you up with which celebrity would you be teamed with i wonder oh god robert oh, Irwin would be hilarious <laughs> probably had a fair bit of Lego. You'd have to, you've already built koalas and things. You'd be, you'd be half a pair. That that they'd pick someone that was completely opposite to me, just to have that, and opposite to you too. So it'd have to be someone so some really sort of celebrity influencer or something. But yeah, yeah someone who would have with the yeah, yeah. His job <laughs> title is influencer that would blow i would just oh, be so like, one of those fake not jobs, a job right sorry it's a fake job that's yeah I mean, fake someone jobs. with a fake job is earning three times as much as me that's that's what uh that's what it's like. <laughs> i know a few people that are earning mega dollars by being influencers oh, i'm sure i'm sure but oh just does my head in but anyway it's just you know it's an interesting world you know especially with like australia is funny because we don't really have many lego influencers they seem to be very america based because there's mm. a lot of them right and then when you really look at the lego masters america most of them are influencers now obviously we don't really have that mm -hmm. here with bar a few like crystals an influencer but not a lego one she was one before lego masters but like do you guys find that jumping from season three to season five it was a wake-up call on how hard lego masters actually was overall uh, i think we knew already <laughs> <laughs> um, and Gabby didn't stab Ryan. Congratulations! Yeah, yeah no, at least, at least not on camera, right? <laughs> no. Like we said, it was a very favourable edit, Rick. No, <laughs> 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 I, it was it was interesting because I think like we definitely went, we had ups and downs, that's for sure. Um, and I think that in many ways, at least from my perspective, I felt like we actually came in a bit more sort of prepared and a bit more sort of pumped up with what to expect going into grandmasters even and, and we went and we literally went in with no expectations figuring that we were probably one of the lowest ranked um in terms of you know we, we expected winners seconds winners runner up winners runner up and we were one of two thirds maybe um that was sort of how we had uh, sort of imagined it so we were totally fine with just being, you know, a little bit of cannon fodder. Um, so, yeah, to Except come in we and... Weren't, though, cause we thought we were, but the truth is we're actually both quite competitive. Yeah. So I think we'd, <laughs> <laughs> we'd made our piece in some ways with just, you know, come, have a good ride, out we go. But then once it all started, we were like, God. and when that leaderboard came out, like, come on, how far I know. <laughs> I just... I literally lost my mind when that rolled out. I, yeah. yeah, I actually thought it was going to be for the whole season and I thought that they were going to change the way they rank it and rather than have eliminations, it was going to be an accrued point system and then just the, the finale would be the top three. And I thought that's that'd be great. For an all-stars show, um, it gives everybody screen time and, and and for that entire season, people that are rooting for this team or that team, they're going to get, you know, plenty of them uh rather than seeing them go so soon but um but yeah clearly that wasn't what it was intended for it uh was effectively ineffective um <laughs> but yeah i did get yeah, the white line fever is interesting isn't it gabs because you you were shocking with it as soon as you got in and started running you were like we're, go we're gonna smash this we're gonna get there we're gonna <laughs> <laughs> yeah not gonna be third again ryan if we are you're sacked no, it's not right. <laughs> I, I, no. I, honestly, it, honestly, honestly it's hilarious. I mean, We'd have conversations in the apartment where Gabby was her regular self. Her, her, her. 
oh, you know, we'll just see how we go and da 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 da. And as soon as she was on set, she was like, we're going to take this out. We're going to take this. We're going to win this one. Gonna... And as soon as the boys threw a bit of a few words our way, we, she was like, nah, we're going to get them. We're going to get them. They're our boys, but nah, we're going to get them. <laughs> I am. Um... It, you know, funny, it wasn't even ever about winning, though, to be honest. Oh, no. It's just the com- the competitiveness is about making the best thing you possibly can and kind of wanting to make the best thing in the room. But I never imagined getting into the finale of or getting as close as we did even in season five. It wasn't, it's not the competitiveness in terms of the end. You might have been a bit more focused on the end goal, Ryan. I was probably a bit more focused on on being in the room. But in the room, I was very competitive, I think. Yeah, yeah but you guys, you know, you guys did extremely well together, considering you guys didn't know each other. Mm. That's you know, a... it could have been a could have been a Caitlin Billsy situation. Could have been like a, a, a situation where you didn't get along. Like, and that's bad. That's it makes good TV, but it doesn't make good partnerships. No, that would have been that would have been tough, tough run. But no, thankfully, and I think it was recognised that like a lot of people did have a bit, few teething issues in their relationships um you know because uh, half of season three were paired um and half of them knew each other um but even those that knew each other hadn't necessarily built together um and a lot of people did uh note that uh gabby and i were very lucky that we did get along um that we both had a had a, a building style that could work with each other um and you know like even little things like i know that um i uh, went on about the maths of Lego, and so the Gabby would just build and say, "No, no, no you, you have to do it this way, and then two plates, and this, and then the two plates, so that it can actually, if we stick something on later, it will work." Um, and so that was uh, like one of those small little tidbits that, rather than go, "Oh, no, no, no I know what I'm doing," and um, Gabby was, "Oh, no, no, show me that again." Ah, oh, now I get it. And um, yeah, not every pairing had that. Um, so we were very, very lucky to. Well, to, and obviously they liked you enough to off. invite you back. Yep. I, st- I-, <laughs> <laughs> I, st- I still remember the invite back. <laughs> yeah, Gabby was. Uh, Gabby knew a little bit before me. My my involvement was dependent on hers. But yeah. um, uh, I remember. I remember when Gabby said first. yes. Gabby, do you want to share when you said yes? No, I, I that asked us back, and I had actually initially said, "Look, probably not," because my, you know, my I had a little son who was quite sick and having treatment at the time. I sort of thought, oh, um, "I don't think I can do it." And then I told my husband that I'd said no, and he was like, "Oh, I think you should probably do it," because he was like, "You're not going to have another chance to do something like this." So that had already made me second think myself. And then we we got invited to the Logies, which was. Yeah, which was uh, you know, pretty amazing. It was good fun. We were act- technically we were Logies adjacent. Rick, we were at a, like some sort of Channel Nine <laughs> watching party, so I don't want to sort of talk us up. But um, we got to do the we got to wear good costumes. We got to <laughs> we wear. Got we, got, we got tarted up. We look. Yeah, it was fun. Um, don't probably hang on. I'll think of another way to say way to say that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, Ryan we, got tarted up, Gabby. We got yeah, scrubbed that up. Was me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and um. And all the guys independently, all five of them, the finalists, had made something out of Lego to wear, like a tie or a, without discussing it first. They're such nerds. They're just, I had I had Lego earrings. It's much more. It was so discreet. funny. And, then, and Brit Lamb <laughs> was wearing his little Lego bow tie. Lego bow like, tie. Yeah. Oh. And then, um, yeah, so then the producers appro- and Hamish approached me at the uh, sort of after party and, um, and I, you know, had a nice meal and a good time. And I was like, okay. I was like, all right, I'll do it. <laughs> so, Eddie, of course you're going to say down. yes to a man with a gold logo in his pocket. I know. <laughs> it's very difficult. <laughs> well, on that note, thank you very, very much, Ryan and Gabby. Uh, I will okay. share if, I don't know if you're on social media much, Gabby. Would you like me to share your social media or not really? Instagram? You can. You know, I look, I, I only use it for this sort of thing, for Lego sort of stuff, but it's um Gabby from Melbourne. Gabby underscore. And Melbourne. Ryan, now this is your perfect opportunity, what you love to do. Promote yourself, young man. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I don't promote myself. It's funny. I'm not on Insta as much as I, I used to be, and I get on there and like, oh wow, there's like 30 messages I should probably have replied to a month ago. Yeah, um, sorry, Rick. Yeah. That's all right. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so the, the Instagram is of course Ryan one, but uh, 
yeah, definitely head over to if you're a work at a school or whatever and you're interested in having some dork come up and do some lego nerdy stuff with your kids, uh, bricculum.com.au is uh, my website. Perfect. I'll listen to that later so I can put it in like the ah, uh, podcast you. description and stuff because I usually, some of them, if they're chaotic, like this one's been a little bit chaotic, so I'll have to watch this to make sure we don't upset anybody <laughs> in the long term. So I'll do some creative editing. So no one needs to worry about what we've spoken about. That's fine. But <laughs> how, how odd, how odd that the, it's the Ryan, it's all about Ryan. <laughs> no, it was me. I was the one who started it. Yeah, you started it. Gabby's well, I just think it's hilarious. Like, Boys, cut it out. Like that, Gabby's been the saint here. I just want to clarify. It's Gabby's been the good one. I get that's the general edit, Rick. You're onto it. That's how I get edited. And it, well, it, Ryan you. knows that it's not I the like case. I like how consistent <laughs> with that Gabby edit. I, I just love how, you. how you've described this conversation with us, the happily married couple vibe, as the mo one of the most chaotic you've had to deal with. Interesting. Mm. <laughs> it was all Ryan on that note. Thank you, Gabby and Ryan. Thanks, You're most Ryan. welcome. Nice to see you. <laughs>